Peter Navarro is with us, White House Trade Policy Director. Peter, welcome to the program. If you forgive me, I want a rapid fire series of things here because we've got an active market. So first sure. off, the president, did he back down by delaying tariffs on China? The president made a strong and flexible decision. Uh, basically, we're putting tariffs in on uh, almost half of the $300 billion worth of Chinese exports starting September 1. That's strength. Um, he's flexible in that he's delaying the remainder until December 15th. And Stuart, let me tell you why he did that. Uh, one of the great strengths of President Donald J. Trump is his ability to engage with stakeholders, whether it's business people, union leaders, anyone. And so we heard two things uh, from the businesses uh, that were going to be impacted by this. Uh, the first of all is for the holidays, uh, they had already bought the stuff. They, they had dollar denominated contracts. There was no way based on those contracts they could shift the burden of the price uh, of the tariffs back to the Chinese. Uh, and on that basis alone, uh, there was no reason to inflict harm on ourselves. Uh, the second thing we heard, uh, which was, was very persuasive as well, is that these businesses, most of these, in fact, the overwhelming majority of them will continue to shift sourcing production in the supply chain out of China. And this is true uh, regardless of whether there's a deal. So what the president has done with this strong and flexible decision, Stuart, uh, is basically continue the pressure on China, which uh, most of the pressure now is the fact that China is losing uh, their supply chain. Okay. And so that's where, Did, that's where things stand, and uh, I, I, it, was a, it was a wise, strong but decision. But for, for this and, delay, did, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Peter, but did, did we get something? Did China give on something? If we gave a little by delaying it's, the it's, tariffs, it's, what did we get? Total, totally wrong way to look at it. Uh, this this whole, whole idea of looking at it that way. The whole uh, premise of what we're trying to do is, is pain on them, not pain on us. And so the, the last remaining part of that $300 billion, if we, if we simply put the tariffs on September 1st, that would be more pain on us on, rather than pain on them. That's just silly. President but, Trump is a wise, strong uh, president, and he did exactly what we need. Now, here's the good news, Stuart. Let's be clear about this for the markets, right? Let's put all of this to bed. What the markets now have is total certainty about how the scenario is going to unfold over the next three to six months. What we have here is the tariffs are moving forward, number one. Number two, uh, we are continuing to negotiate with the Chinese, and there will be a, another phone call uh, within two weeks. Uh, all of the businesses that are affected by the tariffs now know how they will be affected. And we need to move to a place uh, where I think, Stuart, you and I would agree on we need to be, which is to deal uh, with uh, China's seven acts of economic aggression. And, and okay. whenever you talk about this, Stuart, it's important to point out what we're fighting for. Okay, I understand. Well, it. No, it's it. the cyber but, intrusion. Well, you get it, but, but, yeah, but I, everybody we, we else know that's does the it. backdrop. I've got to move Do on we this. Know what that, message? Though? You're appearing on this program today. Sure. You're live from the White House today. Yes, sir. Uh, surely China is watching. Their trade negotiators are surely watching. What message do you want to send them with your appearance today, right now? I want to say uh, yesterday in Pennsylvania, President Trump uh, attended a Shell refinery uh, rally, essentially, uh, to celebrate the largest investment project in Pennsylvania's history. It's the largest construction project now in this country going on now. It's 6,000 jobs, 3,300 rail cars that are going to be moving gas and plastics from the Marcellus Shale. This is what President Trump does. He pays attention to growing this economy by, by building things, and the Chinese should pay attention to that. The president grows this economy. That's what he focuses on. And look, uh, the, the negotiations will be ongoing. I think what's really important here and what, what has the markets in a tizzy today, and, and, and people really need to be a lot calmer than I'm hearing from, from folks on TV, um, is, is the yield curve situation. And the biggest problem we're fighting right now at the White House um, is the Federal Reserve's interest rate policy. We lost a, almost a point of growth in, in Q2 uh, simply because the Fed had raised interest rates too far to the fast. The good news here, Stuart, is I think 
Uh, the kind of volatility you see today, the inversion of the yield curve, is sending yet another signal that the Fed needs to lower ba okay. uh, interest rates by 50 basis I'm, points as quickly as possible. I'm sure Hopefully they've heard that message. It. I'm sure they've heard it. Now, yeah. you've got until December the 15th. Um, then we decide whether or not these 10 percent tariffs go on to these extra products. In the meantime, what do you want from China? Are you trying to negotiate, say, a big farm purchase? Let's do the seven then. Cyber intrusions into our business networks, forced technology transfer in exchange for market access, intellectual property theft, dumping into our markets, state-owned enterprises which are heavily subsidized, currency manipulation, and killing Americans with fentanyl. These are the seven structural issues uh, that we need to get settled in this negotiation, and people need well, to be patient You're not going to get that by December 15th, are you? That's a long list. So, again, Stuart, why are you why are you putting false timelines on things? All well, we December fifteenth is the time well, when the these tariffs extra tariffs will go on may on go on. They they will go on on December fifteenth. All we've done is give the retail uh, the businesses another hundred days. Well, you, but, uh, for the reasons but, which I which I articulate now. But Stuart, the president let, might not apply them on December the fifteenth so, if you get something see, from the Chinese in the meantime. What do you want? What is feasible so, that so you could Stuart, get between now and December Stuart, the fifteenth? Stuart, you're you're missing the whole point here. You're missing the point here. What this negotiation is about is about seven acts of economic aggression and structural change on China. This president is not about half measures. Uh, you can't meet the Chinese halfway on this because if you meet them halfway, they'll only be stealing half as much as they're stealing and killing half as many of Americans. So, again, let's. I think the market should uh, should be really happy about what happened yesterday. You have certainty now about how things are going to unfold. We're going to continue to talk to the Chinese about significant structural change. In the meantime, there will be tariffs that will be implemented in in a in a, in a measured way. And you and I both know, Stuart, the size of these tariffs are, are small relative to macroeconomic activity and relative to trade flows, and they should have no material effect on growth. What they will have, what has effect on growth now, Stuart, is the Federal Reserve's interest rate policy. Okay. The other thing that's important here, Stuart, and President Trump was very clear about this yesterday, talking to union leaders in Pennsylvania, we need U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement passed. That's, that's going to be okay. another point of growth for us and, and hundreds of thousands of jobs. So, again, I, I, look, this, is, this is a good day in America. Yesterday was a good day in America. Yesterday was a good day in America because the president was the, creating the, jobs The Dow Jones average is now down 460 points. That I is understand. the low of the day. I'm sure I the understand. market's paying attention and, to and what I, you've got I, to say. And, and I think that, that what your job is, uh, and you know what it is, is to just look at the chessboard. And you know well, what's driving the yeah, market. Yeah, but it's to ask today. you it's questions, the, Peter. And I'm asking the question sure. can you get anything before December 15th? And what do you think you might get? So here's, here's what I can tell you uh, the negotiations will happen behind closed doors with Ambassador Robert Lighthizer and Secretary Mnuchin working with their counterparts. Uh, uh, speculating about anything is counterproductive at this point. We've Do you think seen there's that. a possibility of a mini deal? I mean, for Look, example, for, Stuart, just for example, I mean, a lot of farm purchases from China, would that be enough to, for the president to say, okay, we'll lighten up on the tariffs come December the 15th? I mean, I can imagine a quid pro quo like that, can't you? Stuart, uh, it's your job and your guest's job to speculate. My job is to tell you that these negotiations will happen behind closed doors and we know what needs to be done in terms of the seven structural issues that need to be addressed. And people just need to be patient. But in the meantime, are the you the president's hardliner on China? The, Stuart, come on, let's let's not let's not go places like that. You're just being provocative now. No, I'm not. No, no, no. You're I'm being not. Peter, needlessly I'm not. I'm provocative not. here. I'm not. No, really, you are, Stuart. So, so across the media, you are regarded as the president's right hand man on trade, and you are the China hardliner. I sure, mean, and where, you where did you hear that? that? You, where did you hear that from? You heard that from, from media, which are trying to yep. stir up trouble. What we have, I think, is the finest trade team that's ever been assembled, and it includes Secretary Mnuchin, Robert Lighthizer, Wilbur Ross, Larry Kudlow, and myself, with the president leading that band. It's the president that makes the decisions. Uh, and it's, we have very diverse points of view, uh, and when the president makes a decision, uh, we are all behind him. And all of this other stuff... 
Look, here's what's important, Stuart. Well, uh, you're, I'm sorry. Hang on. I, I, I just got to interrupt because this is important. I stuff. know, but you're, you're you, going to be talking about the seven. Again, and I'm not. I'm not. I just don't I'm talking go about there. the seven deadly <laughs> sins, the, the seven points which you've raised, <laughs> which are really radical change in China, is what you're demanding. If we don't Why get, use the word uh, radical? Okay, okay. I mean, that, big change. Put it provocative. like that. It's big change in it's China is what you're asking for. If we Would don't we get, okay, but if we don't get it, are we in a trade war forever? So I think um, if we don't get China's structural change, uh, the global economy will have lost a great opportunity for the next leg up uh, on growth. It's not just the United States that affected. Uh, by China's uh, bad actions uh, on on these structural issues. So what, what, what the president look in two and a half years, the president has united this country behind him on standing up to China, and uh, it kept from Capitol Hill to the to public opinion polls and everything in between. And it really does a disservice, I think, to this president to needlessly speculate and talk about trade wars and radical and all this. Let's, Stuart, come on. We have to look at this as the chessboard as a way of restoring the global economy to, to what you would want, a, a fair trade economy where everybody prospers. That's not what we have. So in the next couple of months, investors should be reassured by the certainty they, they have that we are continuing to negotiate and that tariffs are going on in a measured way at a, at a, at a relatively uh, small level. There won't be any macro impacts of that. And in the meantime, let's focus on what the Federal Reserve is doing. If Look, if the Federal Reserve announced this afternoon uh, an emergency 50 basis point hike, you know what You know what that, those red numbers would do. They, they'd jump into the green and we'd be on our way to 30,000 on the Dow. Okay. Peter, I'm afraid we're out of time, and so are you. I understand this. But, uh, look, thanks very much for being on the show today. Straight out. Peter, we do appreciate it. Thank you very My much. My pleasure. Sir. Thank you.